I'll give my time really, guys. Help me out. So let me read this, amen. Um, and uh, quote for today, I always do one. Uh, here's a quote for today, and then we'll get into, get into the word. And once I read the scripture, then you, yeah, you can stop playing. It says, be careful. Your next season is going to make some people wish they had a treated you different. I read that again. It says, be careful. Your next season is going to make some people wish they had treated you differently. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. In Africa, they put it on their heads. Be careful. The next season. So if somebody watching, watching, they saying, what is going on? They, they are sewing into what I just said. They are sewing into that. That's all that is. They, they, sewing into the, they sewing into the next place. They are sewing into the next place, amen. That's what that is. They just, Dr. Audrey, okay, they, they, sewing, they are sewing into the next place. That's all that is. I am a money magnet. Oh, I am a money magnet. Oh yeah, prosperity on my life for real. Not just in natural, in the supernatural. Amen. Be careful. Yeah, be careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. The blessing of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. You better be careful. See when God just automatically do something like this. Something special get ready to happen. Something special get ready to happen. Hallelujah. Be careful. Your next season. The next place you go, your next one, amen. Ah, I'm somewhere in the future. I'm somewhere in the future. Looks much better than it does right now. Those who are watching by air, hey, let's call, amen, spontaneous giving right here. Let's call spontaneous giving. The day is 8-8. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I ain't realized. The day is 8-8. New month, new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's not the amount. What's happening with it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just going to preach on that today. Yeah, leave it right there. I'm just going to preach on that today. We we'll just leave it up at the altar. We'll just preach on it. I, I get it in after a while. Hallelujah. Your next season. Your next season. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before I preach, will somebody give God some glory? Will you give him a praise? Will you give him a shout? The Bible says, shout unto the Lord, the Lord with the voice of triumph. The Bible says, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Are there any winners in the house today? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Oh my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. Wow. You can sit down, you can. You'll get back up for us, over. <laughs> are you on or are you off? Are you on or are you off? Foundation scripture, let's go there right quick so I can let you go home, go get something to eat. Get you another coffee or whatever you got to do. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying. I, I didn't come to sweat today. Y'all pushing me over here. I didn't come to sweat today. <laughs> but I'm telling you. Something get ready to happen. Something get ready to happen. Let me just say this. If the devil is, if, if life, let me say it this way. If it seems like, seem like things are coming at you or like, like, uh, like uh, I mean, just coming. You, you handling it, but it's coming. It's all right. Because God's going to come to you in a powerful way. Let it come. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Let it come. It did not come to stay. It came to pass. <laughs> Those who watching at home, you may can't feel this, 
Maybe you can. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the power of the Holy Spirit moving on people. Breakthrough's coming. Your blessing coming. If you're watching by air, you ought to say breakthrough is happening. Breakthrough is happening. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's get to this word. Let's get to this word. Hallelujah. Oh, all right, let's get to this word. David, David, forgive me. I'm looking at the wrong clock. I'm sorry, you got me going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the white one. I'm like, hallelujah. Praise God. He probably saying, Doc, what's going on with you? I'm drunk. But I ain't drunk as you suppose. It's just an ain't hour. Courtney I ain't drunk as they suppose. If they said on the day, uh, amen, <laughs> they, when the Holy Spirit fell. He said, we, they, we ain't drunk as suppose. We ain't drunk like people been drinking in the morning time. You know, it's just, we, we drunk on the Holy Spirit. The church need to get back drunk on the Holy Spirit. Keep it in balance. Okay, let's read this, praise God. Hallelujah. It says, James 2 and 17. Wow, good Lord, have mercy. Okay. James 2 and 17. Hallelujah. It says, so also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And what we've been talking about is that, you know, uh, so, you know, average people look, look to get off, but successful people look to get on. They look to go to work. Shout, go to work. And so I told you, success is not something that we pursue. Success is something we become. Now, here's the deal. Success is not a million dollars. It's not a t some type of car, house, all those. Don't get me wrong. When I say that, I don't want anybody thinking that, that you should have those things because I like nice stuff. I want nice stuff, and I'm excited when you get nice stuff. I'm excited when, when people get new cars, new houses, new whatever. I'm, I'm, listen, hey, hey, it's just like it's ours, amen. I'm excited. Amen. But, 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 but the deal is, is, is that we can't measure success by that. We measure success by the mandate God has put on our life. You know, so my question today is, are you on or are you off? Now, it's very interesting that uh, they do this big thing, and I mentioned this for a reason uh, at, at the Lions, and they, uh, we, but that Friday night, no, 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 Saturday night, excuse me, Friday night, they kick off, you know, this big show, they have all these things, they have entertainers, and, and they, generally, uh, the owner, Andy, and his wife get up and give uh, greetings, and so, Andy gave his greetings, and he said, Jane, uh, greet the people. Here's what she said, and I think y'all saw something, she got me, she said, as Doc Rock would say, are you on or are you off? And she's trying to say it just like me. She says, well, I can't hardly say it like him, but he's going to teach me. <laughs> now, no glory go to me. Glory go to God for the message that he's given on and off. Because I didn't get this from somebody. God gave it to me. And I want to ask you the question today. Are you on or are you off? Because if you are off, don't look for the things that own people get. It takes effort to be on. And, you know, we, we talked about being on in our work ethic. We talked about being on in our commitment. We talked about being on in our faith. We talked about being on in diligence. We talked about being on in our mental development, our attitude. You said that last week. Today I want to talk about being on in your prayer life, your prayer, your giving, and your knowledge. I need to finish this today. So, we, so we buckle up, buttercup, as, uh, as, 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 as Marcy would say. Amen. All right, because we got to take a ride, all right? All right? So, so number one is, are you on or are you off when it comes to prayer? Now, now this may not sound good. It may not be a good thing. But the deal of the matter is, your prayer life is a reflection of your relationship. Are y'all hearing me? Now, I want to be very specific before I read this first scripture, uh, James, the fifth chapter, verse 16. James uh, 5 and 16. I'm going to read it in, in uh, English Standard Version. But, but the deal is, when I say prayer, I'm not just talking about you bending your knees in the morning time and saying uh, your traditional prayer. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You need to do that. Do that. But doing just that. Prayer is communication with God. And it should be happening all throughout the day. See, here's the deal. Let me help somebody out. If you're praying for five hours on Mondays 
And then, of course, you're kind of telling people about it. You know, let them know that you kind of, you, you spiritual and, you know, you pray and you fast. But if you're only doing that, like, on Monday, but the rest of the week you're not communicating with God, that's religion. It's not the length of your prayer that impress God. It's the sincerity of your prayer and relationship. You know, we thought, you know, if I pray for an hour, then I'm more spiritual. Well, half, half of that hour you're thinking about what you're going to be cooking. And other things, because the mind will start going all kind of ways. You got to kind of keep putting it back where it needs to be. So the best thing to do is get up and, okay, and, and pray continually. You do your prayers, but throughout the day, you're acknowledging God, and you're talking to God every step of the way. Are y'all hearing me? That's relationship, all right? So here's a scripture for you. Uh, talking about are you on or you're off in prayer? Are you on or are you off? Can you answer that? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah oh, you're on or you're off. I'm asking. Okay, let's, we're talking about in prayer. It says in James 5 and 16, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that, he, that you may be healed. And we're talking about healing him. But here's the part I want to get to. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Okay, uh, Amplify said it's dynamic in power. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So when you pray, okay, uh, as, as, as a righteous person, that means one who rightly connected to God, joined God, know God, then you have power. And most people don't realize the power they have when it comes to prayer. Amen. You have power. Now, you don't have any power over another person's will. The will of man is the most dominant authority in the earth. No one has power over another person's will. Matter of fact, and you can't be praying that, that God gets somebody. Vengeance is the Lord. God will get you. See, those are crazy prayers. That's religious stuff. God, please get them. And, and, it, and God don't get them just because you said it. Because you sent out of spite and vengeance, and vengeance is the Lord. God don't move like that. God move in love. So when God chastises you, it, it's always in love. He does chastise us, but it's always in love. You're doing it out of hate, spite, unforgiveness. Okay, so you can't pray, you know, somebody that, 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 that you know, a train hit them or pray that they catch a flat. That's witchcraft. That's sorcery. Pray that a husband hit her or pray that a wife leave him or whatever. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about praying the word of God, praying the intent of God, praying what God has said. When you do that, you got power. You have power to pray over your kids and rebuke the enemy from them. You have power to, when they leave in the morning and when your family leave to, to speak for protection of God, okay? I, we pray every morning for God's protection. I, I totally believe if, if, we, if we don't do those prayers, sound those angels, Dr. Audrey wouldn't be with us here today. You, 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 you have power to pray. And stop saying that the devil has more power over you. Religious people say that. The devil don't have more power over you. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Matter of fact, it says you have overcome the world, little children. So, so you have power. You have power over your circumstance. You do. Yeah, I use this formula teaching all the time. Okay, and some of you use it now. E plus R equals O. E represents your environment, the events that happen in your life. R represents your response to those environments. O represents your outcome. And see, if you want to speak that biblically, okay, E is what the devil brings to you and people bring to you, but R is your response. It's your prayer life. It's what you tell God about the situation. So you got E, okay, you, you got R, you got O. You, you, you determine your O. Are you on or you're off? You, you, see, you determine your O in life. Your outcome in life is determined by you. No, no, no. no. Well, whatever come happen, you know, whatever gonna happen. No, no, no. That, that's not Bible. That's the people who, who are not on. That's the people who's off and just waiting for whatever to happen, happen. No, no, no. All that we do is, is that we respond with the word of God no matter what's happening. And in the end, your outcome is going to be good. I know that because the Bible says in, amen, in, in uh, Romans uh, 8, 8 and 28, all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose. So I know no matter what I'm going through, it's going to work for my good, but I got to pray the right prayer and be in the right connection with God. See, are you on or are you off in your prayer life? 
See, it's not about just speaking in tongues. That's all right. It's not about just you on your knees, okay, fasting all day. That's good, too. It's about your steady communication along the way every day with God and praying what God has said. Because if you pray what he said, Hey, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word going to remain forever. So if you pray what he said, which is his word, it's going to remain. See, some of you can't love other people because you ain't praying the word. If you pray, I should love my neighbor as myself and pray for and help my enemies and pray for my enemies, those who despise and use me, that's the Bible say. See, we don't pray that. But if you pray that, that'll get in your spirit. It'll get in your mindset, I, I, amen. Hello, somebody. And then you'll start to love your enemies. I love all my enemies, every one of them. Now, I can stand up and say this. I really do. There's no person I hate because I, I, I prayed that for years that I love my enemies. Now, it's inside of me. Now, I, it's, it's hard for me to hate them. Don't last long. I mean, I like them. I don't like myself sometimes. <laughs> Anybody ever get tired of yourself every once in a while? If, you're not, if you don't, you're not, you're not honest. <laughs> Amen. Okay? So, so, so that the, uh, uh, King James said, the, the fervent effective. Fervent means, you no know, rich. Okay? Prevailing much. It, it, it's, it's dynamic in power. You ha- we have a power source that we don't even use. Most people, when they get in trouble, and I've been guilty myself, the first thing they do is call somebody. First thing they do is say, oh, Lord. Not, oh, Lord, and help me, but, oh, Lord. But you, what we should do when we get bad news, we should go to the good news and, and, and pray it. Let me keep going. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray without ceasing. That means continual. Now, that don't mean not ceasing, that you walk around all day long, man, Jesus, help me, and you, and you, and you, know, you speak to me, I can't even speak back because I'm praying without ceasing. That's not what that means. People are going to think you're crazy. <laughs> you know, and, and, and while I'm saying that, now don't y'all get offended by me, I'm trying to help you. Uh, We're we trying to help the world, right? We're trying, we trying to help people that need Jesus, right? We're we trying to get them saved, delivered, and empowered, right? Right, right? We're not trying to look, you know, just be spiritual, right? Am I, am I, am I, okay, thank you. You know, so if that's the case, I mean, there are some things, guys, you, you know, y'all, do, you, you, stop using biblical words around people that don't, that are not biblical. They don't understand what you're saying. You got to speak in, in plain, plain language. That's why I tell you all, when y'all see me out, 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 out here, don't say, I know you have to slip and pull it back sometimes. Just say Dr. Watkins. I, I may be a, with a person that, that, that hate, don't, don't even believe in the apostleship, and I'm trying to bring them to Christ. That's, a, that's an office. No, you ain't think, no. You, you think that making me spiritual. No, you hurting me. And you hurting God. No, I'm serious. See, you see what I'm saying? You got to start thinking like the world thinks. In that sense, hey, that's how Jesus did in order to gain them. Just say Dr. Watkins. That's good. A Doc Rock. A Caracas would be good. That's my mama name in that. I ain't tripping on it. Mm-hmm. I ain't tripping on that. I know who I am. Hello. So, so we got to pray without ceasing, meaning that it's a continual thing, all right? You, you know, in your car, be praying sometime. When you're driving down the road, be praying. Now, every once in a while, Holy Ghost will come in there like it never before. You got to pull over. Uh, see, we, we don't believe in the Holy Spirit no more, Holly. I mean, I don't know who was with us. We was coming back from New Orleans one time. Or something, yeah, and, and, and we saw some people running on the interstate. And we, they were in Willow Chapel, I think, and we were like, what are they doing? They lost their man. What are they doing? We pulled over. We thought something, I'm like, they got bees in their pants or what? I don't know. You know, I mean, what's going on? They on the interstate. I mean, we're on the interstate. They, they running on it. And I'm like, what is the world going on? And I mean, they was like, the Holy Spirit going on. We were like, yeah, we were like, well, come on. And, and, and listen, that thing, <laughs> God was like, I'm on home, Mr. John. That thing hit us, we were running to. I mean, it hit us. We were like, oh, God. I mean, like, whoa. You know, I was like, okay, let me just shut my little mouth. <laughs> I mean, serious. On the interstate in the summertime, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. We have to get in a place of prayer. Now, let me help you out, and we're going to move on to the next thing. Are you on off? Are you on or y'all? All right, praise God. You, your prayers cannot 
be majority. Give me, give me, give me. If you need something from God, by, b- please ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and shall find, knock the door shall be opened. But if, all, but if your prayer every day, 90% is, God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do that. God, I need a new car. Da, 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 da. It's all, if, if, if the majority of your prayer is things, you are out of sync. First of all, do not ever open up a prayer saying, God, I need a car. You haven't even acknowledged him as being God yet. <laughs> Acknowledge him as the father and worship him first. And then, and then ask him, and then say, and then after you ask God that you need a transportation or you need a house, you need this or that, then you say, God, show me how to do it in the natural. And sometimes, well, God answers my prayers. Now, God can't answer your prayer because you're not a good steward. I love y'all. See, so, so you got to be a steward. So you got to pray, God, God. So some of our prayers should be, God, teach me stewardship. Teach me how to spend less, okay, than I make. Teach me how to pull, put some back in savings. Teach me how to have delayed gratification. See, most people don't pray for delayed gratification. What's delayed gratification? You see a new Louis bag, but you have, you know, Walmart purse money. I'm not knocking that. Are y'all with me? I'm not knocking that whatsoever. Hey, I, I had shoes with, you know, with, with, with holes in the bottom of them. These don't. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, no, they don't. Praise God is good. God is good. I can do that, amen, one time. But so we have to pray that. And, and so I'm, I'm talking real right now. So you got to pray to God, show me and teach me delayed gratification because you may not have learned it growing up. It may not, it, it may not be, it's been something that was modeled in, in your family. You know, when you got money, you, you bought some. So now in your mind, you told, your, you, you, you told your conscience that, okay, when I get money, I buy. And, and don't, Lord knows, don't let your bank, you know, save over $1,000. You know what I mean? You start getting itchy. Man, you like a crack, you know, you like you on drugs or something, you know. You know, you got, you got to get the bill. I mean, you got to get the delivery. Come on, somebody. Come on, right? Anybody been there? I've been there. Come on. I mean, I mean, okay, here's what he said. That money burning your pocket. <laughs> burning it up, boy. Right? So, so we have to learn how, so we got to pray that. Are y'all still with me? Well, I'm trying to finish this today, but Lord, I have mercy. I don't like I'm going to do it. Okay, so, so you got to learn that delayed gratification, and you learn it through prayer because what happens is peer pressure get on you. And you see other people doing this. Listen, if you don't have Barcelona money, then you need to be trying to go somewhere else. Ain't no sense to me. We're going to believe God for it. You, you, your bill's behind. So you, you, should, you, you shouldn't even. Y'all, y'all don't want to talk to me. So why are you praying to God and believing God for a Barcelona trip when your bills are behind? The first thing you should be doing, God, I pray that you give me some money. I'll be a good steward. That I get my bills caught up. Once you get your bills caught up, then you make it talk about Barcelona. But you may want to stop somewhere else before you get there. Maybe. I'm just saying. I don't know. Right? But you got to pray. So I'm trying to make this real to you because what happens is we get very religious. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so you put seed down. You put seed in my hand. God going to bless that. So when God bless it, what you going to do with it? See, in the church, you got to start praying for stewardship. God is telling me that right now. Bunch of people got, 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 got stimulus money. Like, you know, some of them got $10,000. Some of them illegally got PPP money. Going to jail for that. I'm telling you, I love you. I pray for you when you get out. And why you in? Uh, but, okay, but, but what did you do with it? Okay, I'll leave that alone. You see? So when we talk about prayer, you're not praying just for things. You're praying for discipline to please God as well. Hey, sometimes I'm praying, hold me, Lord. Some of y'all praying, hold me, too. Don't you? See, mm-hmm. Whatever that may be, it may be, hold me, Lord. I want to cuss him out. Hold me, Lord. Hold me, Lord. I want to snatch her head off. Hold me, Lord. Hold me, Lord. Your kids. Here's your kids. Hold me, Lord. I want to beat the But, hold me, Lord. Those are prayers. How many times God held you? He held you. Yeah. 
Somebody shout, hold me, Lord. Those who watch, you may want to put down, hold me, Lord. But those are prayers. Hold me, Lord. So you communicate with God. You're talking to God. See, some people would discount that as being spiritual. That's very spiritual. That's very spiritual. You know, so next time, you know, there's some in front of you, and you, you know, and you're on your, your diet, and, okay, let me talk about me. And, and chocolate is my weakness, and I know it is. You know, I, 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 you know when they put that turtle uh, cheesecake in front of me, like Brianna and her friend did, like they did, you know, last week, last Saturday night in, in Durham, North Carolina, and asked, asked them. I said, no, nah, I ain't gonna do it. But I said, hold me, Lord. <laughs> I pray to you. I'm trying to get myself together. That cheesecake look good. There's no sense of me talking about I'm gonna eat a piece of it. I don't have that kind of discipline to eat a piece of it. I know I'm gonna eat it all. So I need to say, hold me, Lord. That's prayer. See, are you, see, are you on or are you off when it comes to prayer? Communication with God. Talking to God. Tell him, help me in this situation. Yeah? Hold me, Lord. I, I don't want to be judgmental. Hold, hold. God, I pray that you get, that, 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 my, that, that, that what I feel deep inside don't show up in all my conversations. Man, I, I'm not going to get no further this today. So you got to pray because some things are in you and in all of us, but you got to pray to God and say, God, you know, regulate my tongue, regulate my mind. Let this mind that's, that's in you be also in me, Christ Jesus, according to 1 Peter 4 and 1. I want to have the same mind. Because, yeah, because I don't need what's in me to, 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 to come out. Y'all ready? Can I teach you? Can I help you as I help myself? You see, if, 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 if most of the things you say are judgmental, if most of the things you say are, are against people, and if, if most of the things are always finding fault in other people, that's you. You have some things inside of you that you got to deal with. And you got to pray to God, God, let me deal with those things because they come out that way. I, I, I very seldom talk about what's inside people negative. Very, because I'm a very positive person. So I'm always looking for the good and never the bad. Because if you, if you take care of the good, it outweigh the bad. And God can deliver them. I mean, so God set, set them free. I'm trying to help you. But if there's something in you, you got to pray to God, get this out of me. It may be envious, maybe jealous, maybe pain, maybe hurt from your past, from your childhood, or whatever it may be. But it's coming out, so now you got to pray to God for, for, for God to regulate your mind in order, and your thoughts in order that your mouth talk the right way. Th that is redeemed talk. And based on how you was brought up, it may be different for different people. See, your prayer is going to be different based on how you was brought up. If you was brought up in a very positive atmosphere, whether you know God or not, you, you're going to be pretty, a pretty much positive person, whether you know God or not. How nothing to do with God in that sense. But if you were raised in a very negative, okay, and, and negativity was around you and pessimism was around you a lot, then you got to be praying to God to be optimistic of life. So God, and, and that's when the word come in. So you start praying the word in your life. You get that promise book, okay, and then, and then, you, let the, then you start praying that promise book. Are y'all following me? You, test my start praying the promise book. Yeah, you, and see, so you got to deal with that. You know, and see, most people not not taught this. We just taught, you know, you know, uh, to feel good, and we taught, you know, pray. But how do you do that? The, you know, we call it the Lord's prayer, but it's not the Lord's prayer; it's the model prayer. You know, thy, thy king, Lord, thy heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. You know, so so that's the model prayer. Of what you should be asking, you know, so. You, you got you to take that and, and model that in your life. Okay, let me go to the next thing. Praise God. Y'all getting this? Now, now, here's the deal. I have to use this myself. It's not like, I'm, like okay, I'm teaching you, you this, and I, I, I teach it myself first. And, 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 and here's the deal. I haven't learned it all. I haven't learned it all. We are learning every day. We are growing every day. If you are trying to find some dirt on me, 
you will find it. I'm just, if you are looking for dirt on Doc Rock, because he thinking if you're looking for dirt, you're going to find it. Maybe some stuff growing in it, too. Maybe I'm that you know, but 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 also you're gonna find a per, a man with a heart to, for God and a heart for people and want to live righteous. Hello, somebody. Amen. Trying to help somebody. All right, are you on or are y'all? Let's talk about giving. Let's talk about giving. Ah, it's a touchy one because everybody is thinking that the preacher. Want their money. <laughs> Jere, they all think the preacher wants their money. But the deal of the matter, Jere, most people don't have too much money. I mean, if I, if I, was, if I was a preacher that wants people money, no offense, I'm going for the millionaires. I'm going for, I'm, I'm going for, I'm going for people who, who at least make six figures, you know. I ain't nothing for I mean, who, who may, may, may have 2000 in the bank anyway. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, when, when we, so when we talk about giving, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. So can somebody say, well, you're a preacher. They all put all their money in his hand. woo we ain't a lot of money. I, I, I appreciate it. And, and, and I use it, I'll probably give it away knowing me. Okay, but, and I appreciate it. But, but you, know, you know, I got that around the house somewhere. No, for real, I got that around the house. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, but I appreciate it, Pastor Steve. I ain't, I ain't above it because at the time, man, you gave me $5, man. woo Lunch for two days. Two days. Yeah, the, 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 dollar, the dollar meals, you know what I'm saying? Get a dollar hamburger, dollar fry. Water. I got two days. That's, that's $4. rest of it is tax. See, I, see, see, I've been there. Yes, sir. Know how to do it if I had to do it again. Don't want you, God. Don't want you. Don't want you. Don't want you. We give, and the law of reciprocity says, okay, whatever you put in the ground, come back up. That's the law of reciprocity. So, so you know, as long as the earth remains, seed time, harvest time. Never cease. That's why I know I, know I never be broke, because I'm a giver. For real. Ties, offering, and stuff. By the way, anybody who needs uh, a nice bunk bed, I got two brand new bunk beds that was in both our places that Jocelyn grew out of them now. He barely slept in them. They got, I mean, really nice. I mean, they got a desk under it. You need, you need that, just text me, whatever, you, you can have it. Amen. Amen. Ah, the mattress is with it, too. <laughs> Doggone it. I ain't said to brag. I'm, I'm a giver. And I meant, to, I meant to announce that, and I forgot. <laughs> Fit right with the message. I'm a giver. Love giving. And not giving in, uh, in public. I love giving privately. I love slipping stuff to folks. Sometimes I tell them, then they, 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 they don't even know what they got. Then they come, they come hey, you, you, you meant to. <laughs> Make sure you didn't, because you know, sometimes you want to take out, you try to take out a team, but you take out a hundred. You know, it's a bad day if you ain't got no money. Yet. Let's talk about giving, though. Are you on or you're off and you're giving? The Bible says him. Let's go. 2 Corinthians 9, 9th chapter, verse 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians, the 9th chapter, verse 6 through 8, amplified. All right? 2 Corinthians, 9th chapter, verse 6 through 8, amplified. It says, now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Now, we ought to stop right there. That right there ought to tell us, you know, if we, we, when we give a little, we get a little. But we, see, most of us, we're going to out-treat God on our talent. Listen, your gift and talent will never give you what God gives going to give me with my gift and talent and giving in him. Right. Never. So people who are even millionaires, if they gave to God, they'd, be, they'd, they'd, they'd probably be billionaires right. Right. Uh, or, or multi-millionaires. You know, they, they, you're limiting yourself. Here it is. Okay. So remember this. He, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to others, that blessings may come to others, will also reap generously and be blessed. Ain't got scriptures up today? Hallelujah. Y'all tripping on me. I'm working hard, baby. Y'all better work just as hard as me. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, 
just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. And, the God, and God is able to make all grace, shout all grace, thank y'all. Every favor and every earthly blessing come in abundance to you. Y'all see that? Let me just read that again. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose. Stop. See, when you give, you give thoughtfully and with purpose. Y'all with me? Just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. So if we're making you to give, keep it. If you feel like somebody making you give, keep it. He ain't making me give to church. No, keep your money. Ain't that important? God will deal with you later. All right? For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. That word cheerful literally in the Greek means hilarious. Like when you give, you're like, <laughs> oh, man, okay. that, that's what it literally means. And delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. And, and here it is. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, come in abundance to you. So that you may always shout always. Always. Shout always. Always. Shout always. always. That you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything. Being completely sufficient in him. And have a, an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Now, I'm ready to make you mad, but if you, if you don't get mad and, and, and you just hear me, through, hear me as I speak through God, you're going to get blessed. If you have perpetually, we all can go through some rough things in life, okay, and God have to teach us and get out. But if, if, but if the last five, six years straight of your life, you have been struggling, you are doing something majorly wrong. I had to tell you that. You're not a good steward in some areas. You're not, you're not giving like you should in some areas. And that's why you are struggling. Quit, it ain't the devil, it is you. I love you now. I'm Doc Rock, I love you, okay? But it's you. And you got to come to grips with that. You know, and, you, and, and, and here's, here's the deal. And you got to tell everybody in your house and everybody else, this is what we do. We are givers. We are tithers. This is what it happened. And you got to put your foot down. Be Amen. See, see, because you can make a. I, oh yeah, I know. I know millionaires who are struggling. I know people who make a million dollars a year and they are struggling. I know people who make five hundred thousand dollars a year and struggling. Your struggle is not the amount. Your struggle is the uh, uh, principle. Is what you're doing with what you got in. And that's telling you now. And so don't say, uh, you know, I, I only make this, that's why I don't have abundance. No, we don't have abundance because we're not, if you, you're faithful of a little, he'll make you rule of much. But you got to be faithful of that little, means that you got to be a steward over that. Yeah. And, amen. And, and giving is the number one priority. Yeah. And not just giving anyone, you, you know, do that. But you, this, this time I give it to the Lord first. Yeah. Yeah. That others may be blessed. How y'all follow me? Now, hey, I give to charities and all that, and we should. It's a good thing. Amen. I give other people. You know, we swipe cards at, at, at the grocery stores. Amen. And, I, and I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm trying to be rich and all that. No, no, no. And not at all. You know, hey, you got, but you got you to live within your means. And if you've been struggling for a long time, something wrong. So now we have to go reassess what's going on. Check up from the neck up, look around from the shoulder down. So we got to make an you know, assessment of where I'm at, what am I doing, the decision I'm making, who I'm hanging with. Because sometimes your giving is predicated on the people you hang around with. If they bad stewards and stingy, you gonna, if it's five of them, you the six. You got to get around some people who understand stewardship and stop asking broke folks for, for financial advice. If your mother or daddy, love you, is broke, don't ask them about no money. They don't know. And they're going to give you an answer because they feel like they have to. But they don't know. And then you're going to take their advice because you have called them a, a credible authority figure. 
and anybody you call a credible authority figure, you have given a right to subconsciously speak to your mind. And so you'll do what they, tell, what they tell you to do, but what they doing not working. Now, they, they may, you may ask them advice in an, another area, but you can't ask them advice with money. They bad with money. Well, I love mama. I love mama too. But they bad with money. They bad with money. You can't tell me nothing. That's my daddy. Your daddy broke and you're going to be broke too. No, I'm not, I, I'm not coming against you. I love you. I, really, I do. But, but you got to get in the spirit and get your mind right. Hello, somebody. You, you know, you got to get around people who, 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 who are givers. Who give bunchably and re bunchably to only give them more bunchably. See, God don't bless the peace for the peace. God bless the peace for the whole. God ain't trying to get something to you just so you get a house. He's trying to get something to you for you to get, get a house and help somebody else get a house. God trying to overflow you. He's trying to flood you. He's trying to make you rich in Him so you can. Ah! <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I ain't gonna get the knowledge today. I get the knowledge next week. <laughs> I learned giving. I, you, I once said I learned giving first from Apostle Wright and Apostle Wooden. That's not true. I learned giving first from my biological father. I had to go back. I said, why? My father, Curtis Lewis Jackson, was a giver. Now, here's the deal. He was not even in church. But G God put some in him that he took care of other kids that were not healed, that people didn't say was healed. One no, well, you know, it's curb shot. No, 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 not at all. Kids in the projects, he took care of them like his own because God had blessed him. He would give, yeah, they call him Big Money Grip. That's what they call my dad, Big Money Grip. And he would, Saturday morning, and I got 10 aunts and uncles uh, on both sides at one time, uh, when I, on one and 10 or other. But anyway, he would come and buy hardest biscuits for the entire family. Everybody. I mean, we, we, talking, about, we talking about 100 biscuits. And have jelly, grape, strawberry. And then the next Saturday, he'll go by all he'll go by all right bakery there in the cater downtown and get donuts for everybody. I mean, he did this all the time. All the time. And I didn't realize that me watching that, it modeled that I should be a giver. That was natural. That was natural. So I had a natural uh, uh, advantage over most people. And then when I got in the spirit world, and my spiritual father, Dr. Wright, okay, modeled it, and my spiritual grandfather, okay, Pastor Horton, Dr. Horton, okay, was, was a serious, serious, serious giver, okay, and gave me scripture to back what I was doing that made me even want to give more, because the more you give, the more God gives to you. You can't beat God's giving. No matter how you try. Old people say the more you give, the more he gives back to you. Just keep on giving. For you know it's true. What the song said. Boy, I'm out of time. I got one more scripture. What I found is, Sister Carmen, what I found is that people who are stingy and don't really see God as their source are the ones that talk about giving in a negative way. And most of them don't have nothing. Because most people with money, whether they give to the church or not, are givers. Most people I know that have money, I'm talking about real money, they don't mind giving whatsoever. They don't sit around talking about, well, I don't know what they're going to do with this money. I don't know what Habitat going to do. I don't know what the church going to do. They don't talk like that. Broke folks talk like that. So if you're around, so if you're listening right now, Doc, trying to take all your money. They broke. They broke. They broke. They don't have anything. They have no money. They envious and jealous of, of you and me and everybody else. Last scripture. Boy, 
Lord, I remember that time flying over. Bible says in Luke 6 and 38. Luke 6 and 38. Give. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's Israel. Give. A comma is there. I mean, pause. Think about it a little bit. Give. Think about it, you real. Give. And it will be given to you. What going to give it? What you gave? See, here's God. God never gives you a, a seed bag. Never. See, you can't give God a seed and God give you the seed back. Don't happen that way. Never will, never can. Because that's not God. Whenever you give God something, just you giving it to him shoots it up. So when, when you give God a seed, he always give you a harvest. Never give you the seed back. See, you gave God an apple seed, he'll give you a tree with apples on it. He'll never give you that seed back. Ever. That's why I'm very comfortable in giving. If it's my last, if I need five, if I, if I need five thousand dollars for a bill and I have fifty, I'm far away. I might as well put that 50 in the ground and give it as a seed. Because I'm looking for the harvest. Anybody looking for the harvest besides me? I'm looking for the harvest. And when it comes to giving, are you on or are you off? Are you on or are you off? Are you on or are you off? Let me finish the scripture, and I promise you, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm three seconds over, but I'm, I'm there. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour it into your lap. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour it into your lap. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. And run it over. Good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Do like this, good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Come on, do it again. Good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. One more time, good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. So, ho, 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 watch, watch the simile. Watch what God's saying. I'm gonna give you a good measure. So much more, so much, you got to press it down. Like, God, like God, garbage, you know, you, press, you got to press it down. Then it's shaking together, you have to shake it. Then it's running over. So it ain't just God putting something, it's on the top, but you press it down. You shake it together, it's still running over. It says, for, for by your standard of measure, it will be measured back to you in return. So whatever you give, God gonna give it back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. And run it over. It's gonna come back to you. Come back to me? Yeah. Come back to you. Come back to me? Yeah. Come back to you. Anybody looking for the comeback? 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 Get, 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 Make us own, God. God, we 